Alan, Ali, and the staff here at the Esteban Art Gallery and Museum for, for inviting me to be part of the show and, and to be here tonight. And, and thank all of you for, for showing up uh, to share a conversation with me about my practice. Um, Ali noted some of my sort of biographical background there. I'm originally from the, the United States, from Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, and, and, and a very rural farming community. Not unlike the prairies, but, but different in that it's not in the prairies. Um, and I've lived up here in Canada since 1995 when I moved to Halifax to, to undertake some education there. Um, Saskatchewan, in a lot of ways, is uh, home away from home for me. My wife, Melinda, who's here, is from Regina, and, and her family currently resides um, near Prince Albert National Park up in that country. So about seven hours north. So we had a <laughs> wonderful drive down today. We happened to be out for a few weeks, and it was a beautiful um, prairie summer day. And it was great to have the opportunity to, to, to make the trek here and, and, and just take in the landscape. Um, Ali also noted that, that um, I'm currently uh, the curator of the art gallery in Nova Scotia, and I've been working there for the last five years. Um, my museum career, or gallery career, has paralleled um, my artistic career in a lot of ways, and, and uh, sometimes one takes on more of a presence in my life than others. So I have to admit, as of late, I, I've been talking a lot more about the work of other artists than, 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 than my own practice. So this is, again, a great opportunity to revisit some of these works, some of which go back to around 2005 or 2006, and some are as recent as, I believe, 2012 or, or thereabouts. Uh, I'll talk more generally about my art artistic practice. I, 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 I'm a sculptor. I, I, I'm interested in what I would define as object relations that, that suggest narrative structures, so really the, the dialogue that exists between a grouping of objects and, and perhaps the stories that, that they elicit or, or put forth. Rather than working with high art materials or traditional materials like bronze or marble, I tend to work with what would be defined as low materials. So everyday objects um, that, that I can buy in, in hardware stores, uh, um, everyday building materials, and, and, I, and I try to work in a language that's um, um, much more of the everyday. So I, I see that as the materials that I choose to bring into the sculptures that I make and the way that I construct them as a sort of an entry um, it, or it makes it somewhat accessible in terms of trying to sort of understand the, you know, the meaning that they um, 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 put forth. I'm interested in, you know, it, it, as, as much as I'm interested in the art world, I'm perhaps more interested in things that, that rest outside of the art world um, and, and sort of creative gestures that, that exist outside of um, those concerns, such as uh, you know, folk art, folk artists. Um, you know, sometimes you drive down the road and you see somebody's taking a piece of plywood and, and cut out a, a silhouette of a cowboy leaning against the barn. Um, those type of things that I, that I think are really interesting and, and try to examine, think about, think about why perhaps that individual decided to do that, to animate their own private space and home in a, in a creative way, and sometimes these creative acts and gestures um, um, go unnoticed and, and not seen, but, but I sort of find myself drawn to those sort of things. Um, it, I'm not familiar with Jamie Wright's work, he's the other artist in this exhibition, so it's wonderful to, to be in this same space as an artist that's looking to some of the same influences perhaps but looking at them in a different way and, and I, for me that, that draws out new meaning in, in the work that, that I have here as well. Um, each of us in one way or another I, I believe are interested in that space between um, the man-made world and the natural environment, 
and a point of entry that, that Ali um, aptly highlights in her um, essay that accompanies this exhibition is the, the um, act of hunting, or the activity of hunting, and, and, the, and everything that, that surrounds it. So for me, growing up in central Pennsylvania and in a rural community, um, it was you know, that entry into adulthood. I won't even say entry into manhood, um, in that I had some female cousins who were a much, much better shot than myself, but it was something that when you became a certain age, um, you, you were invited to, 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 to be involved with, with the hunting party, and, and, and it was very much about the family and, and the community and, and, and the camaraderie. And, and I guess I don't really, Think that my work's about hunting, but 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 certainly some of the the um, specifically, but but I use that as a as a foil to look at a number of different things. And again, I think it just comes back to that interspace between the natural and the man-made worlds, and the you know the the rural sometimes is a sort of an intersection between those two spaces, and 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 looking to activities that locate ourselves in in, in the natural world and so forth. Um, so the exhibition here is comprised of, um, again, about eight or so works that, that span about ten years in making. Um, I, I don't see these, this particular selection is set or reliant upon the works that are exhibited alongside them. Um, sometimes I introduce other works. Uh, I, I, I'm not worried about selling my work, uh, and, and never have been. I've worked in a way that, I, that, that, that uh, I'm often surprised when something is purchased by a gallery or museum and makes it into a public collection. Surprised that somebody would want to live with these things. But I try to work in a way that, that draws upon my own autobiography, and, and that, that, that meaning my, my personal upbringing, um, my rural roots, uh, and also my educational upbringing as well. So I mean, I think it sort of speaks equally to each of those. Um, I had said that I don't work in traditional sculptural materials, and I highlighted a few that, that come to mind when people think about sculpture, bronze and, and metal and, and marble and things along those lines, and carving and, and so forth. But um, what I, the way that I do work does relate to a particular aspect of, uh, of our history in terms of using found objects, the ready-made um, assemblage, so, so sort of three-dimensional collage, if you will, and sort of building around things. Go ahead. Sorry, could you just explain um, to the audience about the concept of a ready-made? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty loaded image, uh, loaded, loaded. Um, so the ready-made comes back to, to uh, an artist, um, Marcel, Duchamp, who, um, um, how would I describe this, like um, um, almost assigned importance to, to everyday objects as a way to sort of invert the, the, the structures of the museum setting at the time. So people were working in a, in a very formal and traditional way, um, perhaps painting in, in, in a representational manner with, with a, a lot of skill and, and virtuosity and he sort of inserted into that context um, everyday objects and said this is my art and then people would say well that's not art that's that's a urinal and he would say no it's art if I say it's art and it sort of set up this sort of dialogue that, that, that questioned the acceptance of sort of everyday objects and materials into the, the Museum of Gallery setting. And, I mean, yes. It's a, <laughs> and, um, but it's a, it's an idea that really uh, turned the art world on its head, and it was like a really pivotal moment. Um, Certainly, yeah. Twentieth yes. century art, because it meant then that artists could start using these ready-mades, just like David does, uh, and they could bring them in, start using them in their practice and bringing them into galleries. So. You could you buy something off from a shop or whatever? And then he influenced a whole group of artists like Robert Rauschenberg in New York, Andy Warhol, 
many artists adopted all these kind of objects and into pop. Mm -hmm. Popular. And often, yeah, again, commenting on popular culture. So, so yeah, I do see a part of that tradition as well. Um, you know, I'm interested, well, I, I'll just go on and I'll just talk about some of the other the pieces in this exhibition. Um, one of the oldest works in the show is Snare, and that's the, the piece to the right of me, and, and, and I, I think it's from around 2005, 2006, or, or thereabouts, and, and it came from a time where I was collecting a, um, a lot of um, taxidermy that I would pick up at um, yard sales, pawn shops, uh, garage sales, um, sort of places like that, and not with any particular idea of, of what I was doing with them, but, but over time I started to integrate these objects, and I guess I was looking at them as cultural objects, I and mean, really at one point they were animals in, in, in a natural environment, and, and somebody elected to hunt for them and create them into a taxidermy form and keep them in their place of residence likely and then over time became tired of them and decided to discard them. So I don't really see that I was dealing with animals, but it was the image of the animal in our culture that I was dealing with. So I wasn't sure how or what I was going to do with these, but over time I started to work with them and integrate them in, into um, sculptural situations and, and, and contexts, and then over time I became more um, comfortable dealing with the, the specimens that I picked up that were beyond repair and falling apart, such as the, the, the coyote that we have here. I work very in a very organic fashion. I have a lot of things around me. I don't know if the ideas are necessarily drawn out beforehand or preconceived about the ideas that I bring forth, but it, it, it's a lot of play and playing around with materials. Um, I, I was just more interested in taking this forgotten cultural object and reanimating it in a certain way to sort of bring back some kind of life or livelihood to it. Um, in this case here, I was looking at an account in a survival manual where, where somebody was illustrating how to make a snare out of articles of clothing if you found yourself lost in the woods. And I just sort of um, used that as a, almost like a step-by-step -step guideline for, for, for making this particular sculpture. So it's a cinder block as a weight and, and the coyote and just a ooh, ooh, cap. Um, the, often the companion to this work is The Hunter, and that's the title of, of this particular piece here. And in many ways this comes back to that um, image that I highlighted for you before of um, seeing these plywood objects, silhouettes cut out in, in residential sort of settings leaning against somebody's fence in a way to sort of animate their, their public space in a creative way or whether it's a, um, you know, a plywood cutout of somebody bending over in the garden that you drive by and you see somebody's bum sticking out of them and weeding the, the flower bed and, you know, so there's a bit of a sort of a humor to the work as well. It, it could be seen sometimes as a, a, as a dark humor, but certainly humor um, it is an aspect of, of, of many of these works. A lot of the smaller works around the space here are either titled, oh, I think they're all titled Blind or Untitled Blind. Um, this one here is titled Hollow, and it, um, what is, comp this is a format that I work on um, often. It's just a 12 by 12 square form, not unlike a painting, I would call it a sculpture or a wall sculpture, but I have enough, I just sort of use these as a, as a platform for sketching. Often um, these 
sketches or works lead to the, the creation of, of a work at a larger scale, it's just much easier to sort of play around with materials at, at this more intimate scale. Um, sometimes these sketches or, or, or works, I, I, I feel, um, are result enough to stand out as their own, whether or not they lead to a, a, a larger work or, or inspire something um, that, that comes after. This one, again, is titled Hollow, and it's made of plywood, and upon the plywood, I've stretched a wool ski mask over it to, to create the, the, the void here, and on that surface is this stylized motif of um, wood grain made out of caulk and construction adhesive, and um, corks that you find from a wine bottle. So again, you know, the image hangs in balance be between you know something from the natural world, a hollow tree, and one's recognition of these everyday building materials that you can buy down the street at the hardware store. And I like that you know, well, you know, hollow thoughts or you know, the hollow ideas, and just the reference to, to the head with the, the, the balaclava itself. So there's often a, a bodily reference as well in, in these works, whether it's through an article of clothing or through um, circular voids that suggest eye holes, such as in the, in, in the piece here. And, and with, with a lot of my work, um, absence or, or the voids themselves, what's not there is just as important as what's physically present. Um, now I'll try to touch upon that as I, I, I keep going, that, that there's a suggestion of, of individuals behind there lurking in wait. Um, I'll come back to this piece, but I'll just keep going around the, the, the room here. These three pieces here, are, are titled Blind Dry Stone. Um, I'd be blind one and two. I, mean, I, I don't always remember all, 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 all the titles. And um, this one here is made of a barbecue grill cover that, that, that was camouflage to look like a, a stone wall so so you could in, in theory put that over your barbecue and hide it in your backyard so, so camouflage is another thing that, that I reference a lot in my work whether directly there or, or in sort of creating this stylized wood grain the mimicry of the natural world um, and peering through the eye um, the, the cracks and the rocks are um, a, a, a sort of a taxidermy eyes and these two pieces here sort of highlight better that, that relationship of these smaller sketches or, or works to, to larger ones and that they were created and lead up to the blind that we see over here. These are comprised of um, two different arrangements or compositions of, of cedar shakes, a uh, common building material out east, maybe common out here in, in one way or another. Another, but I don't believe as much. And um, again, an assortment of, of taxidermy eyes ranging from elk, um, bear, deer, and, and so forth. And all of these pieces here, and perhaps 102, speak to that idea of um, looking and seeing and observing. And, and when I think of um, those those actions, they're, they're very much the actions um, that take place in, in, in an art gallery that we walk in and, and as, as visitors to space we become the viewers of things and, and um, as we navigate through the, the space um, we look at a lot of things. These pieces here invert that relationship to an extent that, that you know, I, I think that they, uh, well, for me, they, they start to question that space, and and one could question um, 
are, are we the ones looking at things, or are we being um, viewed? And they sort of invert that relationship. So these two pieces here led to this work here. And I'm also interested in sort of architect, provisional architectural structures that, again, place us in, in a natural settings, thing, things like um, deer stands, um, blinds, um, bird watching hides, and, and so forth that, that, that sort of um, camouflage us and make us invisible in, in, a, in, in, in the woods or forest. And using those structures as a starting point for, for creating you know, sculptural forms such as this. Um, here, again, I mean, humor is a, a, a big aspect of, of my work. Um, um, it suggests that there's you know, uh, more than a, a few people um, back there potentially um, looking out at, at us. Again, it's constructed out of um, everyday materials, plywood. Cedar shakes, um, uh, assortment of rubber boots purchased at, at Canadian Tire. For a while, I, I was in, in working this way. I was interested in this notion that rather than shipping my my work, and maybe it speaks to you know again ideas of value and our work is precious or not precious or that, that space between high and low culture. That, that you know um, I was interested in the, this idea of arriving at a sculpture such as this, and rather than shipping it from place to place, arriving at site and buying the materials and, and building them in, in situ, if you will. But I very quickly realized that, and, 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 and not, not that I didn't realize that, um, the building materials aren't so universal from place to place, while something like a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood could be bought anywhere. You know, red cedar shake is something that you might not be able to purchase to, you know, in Saskatoon or, or for that matter, you know, a cinder block is not a, a building unit that you can buy up in the Yukon because they don't have cinder blocks. But nonetheless, I, I think that the, the things that I work with and the way that I construct things are familiar enough that, that we know what they are. And, and, and when brought together, they, 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 they evoke a sense of narrative, I hope, that, that makes one sort of ask or consider what, what they're looking at and, and, and where have they seen that before and, and, and perhaps when they see all the objects in, in a space such as this in, in tandem with another artist that, that it starts to bring forth um, connections from one's own intuition and experience and, and, and makes them ponder the world that's around them in a, in a different way. Um, I think I'll, I mean, I'm just rambling on and on and on here, but I, but I could open it up to some questions. I'm sure there's questions or, Alan, do you have questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted, like, you've, you've touched on this idea about thinking about the gallery space as a place that we look at objects. And uh, the idea of looking is very much imbued in those spaces, and, and your work makes a comment in that it's sort of looking back at the viewer. And um, I just want to like maybe take out a bit that idea slightly further, because I feel that your work is extremely theatrical, because these are really very much like sets. They're very much props. They're you know, literally propped up. There's nothing really holding them together in a sense. You know, um, there's real artifice going on here. There's like the fake camouflage here. This fake shadow. I don't know if you can see but there's actually a this L-shaped uh, oh well it's not really an L but there's a black uh, piece of wood behind here that sort of gives the impression of a shadow. So there's like all these like theatrical things going on and like the comedy as well, like again this idea of comedy and I just wonder are you making a comment um, or maybe not, maybe that this just all comes together in its own way, but uh, are you sort of making a, a broader comment about um, the function of an art gallery as a kind of theatrical space, or, or anything like that. Is, do, you, do you have ideas on that? Well, uh, well, good points. I, I, I think that my work is heavily reliant on the, the, the theater of the, the gallery, as you, you suggest. I've done um, maybe two works at a larger scale outside, and, and while I, I found them to be somewhat 
uh, effectively, I don't know if, if they translated as effectively as I thought to, to the Abdur. So I think there is some commentary um, there uh, about how the, the gallery functions, and, 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 and yeah, I'm certainly playing within that, 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 that sphere, if you will. I mean, certainly relying on that. And theater and artifice, you know, as, as you stated, are, are certainly um, things at play in the work, and the idea of tragedy and comedy and, and, and all those um, ideas are, are things that surface within the work, whether, you know, Even with that I, I mean, yeah, I mean, like it's, a... I want perhaps a, um, you know, ominous sort of image, yet, you know, it's sort of funny as well, and, and you know, to be honest, a bit dumb, you know, in a way, and um, you know, it is in a shadow. It's, it is a it is a black piece of plywood, despite the fact that I call it a shadow. It's the same with blind over here. I'm also interested in, you know, and I see the titles are important, but I, I can't remember all the titles. But um, in, in play on words and, and, and the multiple meanings. Of words as well. So even with blind, I mean, I, I talk about the reference of, of a hunting blind, but it also at the same time speaks back to that idea of viewing and seeing, or not being able to see as well. Um, and I talked a little bit about that with Hollow as well. And, and the title of the exhibition is a, a good example of you playing on that too. Um, Hi, I mean, the one you know, once it speaks to concealing, not being seen, or being visible, or, or you know, um, in Jamie's work, uh, about hides, uh, the part of the animal that, that's the skin. But yes, <laughs> theater is, is, is a big, big part I just of also that kind of as a curator as well, you know, yeah. thinking about gallery spaces and the role of art. The role of art, I mean, I think a lot of it to, uh, and again, on a personal level, it's a critique of a lot of things, including the gallery itself, and, 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 and trying to pick it apart and examine it in a, in a, in a fun and playful and perhaps a provocative way. Um, you know, I, I even look again, if we come back to the subject of hunting as a part of it, or at least an image in my work, that, that, that's something that informs it. Um, you know, I, I, I Couch that in my own autobiography, autobiographical background and, and, and my upbringing. At the same time, you know, I, 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 while well, I use that, I, I think it's a way of analyzing my, myself as well. And, and you know, hunting scene is just you know, the quintessential masculine pursuit, if you will. And um, you know, sculpture, in a way can be seen within the art world as perhaps the same thing, even though I don't, don't see it that way necessarily. Uh, but, um, you know, the language is parallel one, a, one another, you know, practice, precision, aim, the trophy, the reward. I mean, you know, are we talking about art or are we talking about hunting itself? So I think, you know, a lot, back to whether theater or hunting or, or, or the, the, the way I'm working, looking at high and low culture, um, nature, wilderness, um, the past and the present, you know, and the values there. I mean, it's a, it's a way of analyzing the different structures that I'm working within, that I'm about, and, and, and that's around me. So, I, I mean, I guess on that level, you know, it's, you know some, some of the art can be about you. I mean, it's just, you know, we're lucky to have the opportunity to bring it to a public space such as this and share it with other people. And hopefully, like I say, that, that people find some value in it. And when I say value, it's not about buying it necessarily. You're walking, you know, out the door and putting it on your wall. But then there's some, you know, it holds up a mirror to the outside world, the, the space, you know, the, the, the world beyond this space in, in such a way that, you know, when you leave it, it may, you know, form, form it differently. When you create these pieces, do you ever feel sort of influenced by the fact that they're 
staring at you while you're making them. Does that play any part to it? If you feel like you're out in nature and maybe you're the one being stalked? Um, no, I mean, I don't know if that influences it, but, you know, I, I do... I don't know if that influences, but I think about those things. I think about um, those feelings um, that connect that to what you're saying, like walking you know, alone through the woods on a path, you know, that you've walked along many times before, and you're walking along this path, and, you know, it's going to take 30 minutes to get to the destination, and, and you know, there's moments in your life, I think we've all thought this before, where this walk's different this time. It feels like, you know, you feel the hair on the back of your neck sticking up, and you just know that, that something's out there that you haven't thought about before. And, you know, so stuff like that certainly comes into play, but feeling, you know, paranoid or worried or, or things like that, no. No, but, but I think it's parallel with the humor because of um, almost like the wily e. coyote black hole that you can walk through. There's this sense of um, it's it's very much artificial the way it's constructed. Like it, you can tell it's it's ominous, but at the same time the humor is ever present and hopefully you know that. Yeah, I mean, there's, and I think that comes back to the the theater. And, and Work as well. There's a flatness to it, so that, that, that I guess cartoon realities yeah. are a nice parallel. You know, whether it's the, you know, the tunnel painted on the wall quickly as somebody runs through, and the next person hits it. You know, it's that same kind of space. You know what? What I find interesting is when you artists come and talk to us and tell us about your art, you never say to us locals, "What do you see?" What do you see in my own? Because it ain't what you're telling us most of the time. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. What I think, oh, that's not what I saw. You know what do you What do you see? What well, for starters, I was just saying to your friend here. Yeah. That would have been a lot funnier if that had a had a rough rider too long. They're really not great this year. <laughs> and when I look at that, you know what the first thing that came to my mind, you're not gonna be very happy, but it looks like a toilet seat in an old yeah. house. Yeah. That's the first thing. <laughs> so when you said just a minute ago, my goodness, you're going through the woods and you're just oh yeah. and you're frantic, that's why. <laughs> so, you gotta make it that. That's good. Yeah. You know, we never see what you guys do. Or there's something wrong with us, or we don't have no, well, artistic background. I mean Again, I have the opportunity to come here and speak about it, but you're, you're right. I mean, most of the time you're going to you know, walk in here and on your own or with a friend and yeah. not have the, the, the luxury of me up here or out in the space, or I, I say luxury. But, um, um, but you know, I, I rely, I, I'm trying to talk a, a bit about how I'm thinking. I, I guess I never really expect the viewer to, to think that way themselves. Uh, you know, I, I see that my work's really heavily reliant on the viewer, you, to, to bring your own experience into the space and make whatever connections you make. I, I can't control that. I can't, and the way I work, I certainly can't control that. I mean, you could work a certain way that a, a, a may appease more popular tastes and expectations, but but I see that, yeah, I mean, I try to work in a way that's true to myself, and, um, you know, if somebody walks in and sees something in it, whether it's the toilet seat or the rough rider, I mean, that, that's great, you know. Well, this is the, the meeting of man and nature, which is what this whole show is about, you know, like, if you go to, like, one of these one of those bathrooms, like an outhouse in the yeah. like you're exactly, it's made from that wood mm -hmm. and it has a hole in it. That's, <laughs> it's like almost like a perfect metaphor for this show. Yeah, well, like, this happens all the time. I'm not picking on you. No, it's it's all I, I, the time. I, 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 we, we're standing looking at it and we all see something different, you know, and then the artist gets up and talks and we go, oh, <laughs> oh, somebody had it in mind. Yeah. Okay. 
you know. But and I, I, I mean, often again, I work in such a organic way, that, and I say what, what I mean by that is that I, I don't have a sketch on a piece of paper and say this is what I need to go out and buy, and at the end of the day, it's going to look like this. It's about having a lot of things around me at once and just dabbling and playing around, and at the end of the day. Something clicks that I feel that it's resolved and, 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 and has the capacity to exist here. Um, it's only in hindsight that, that I talk about it the way I'm talking about it today. It's, it's, it's with some spending time with it, trying to figure it out myself. You may be right, I may be wrong. Well, yeah, yeah. But I think it's a good point in terms of the art is different than, say, the art of the Renaissance, where you look at something that is meant to emulate something you've seen before, that it's right. all about cre recreating that experience. The layers of meaning um, allow you to enter it with your imagination. There's more room for that than if it were a painting of a tree in mm -hmm. a forest. And if you read the titles of the pieces, often the materials things that it's made of, the titles will start to give you that, a little bit of more to fuel your imagination. Or you might read uh, the educational panels that might help you, but still it will exist in your mind and your creativity um, just as much as it will in the artists. There's that beauty of the artwork allowing the create creativity of its audience to meet it somewhere. And it doesn't have to always be what the artist says it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the joy in discovering the artwork, I think. And sometimes also <clears throat> the frustration, because you can't always get that same amount of depth and meaning unless you are privy to the writings and the. But I feel like your work kind of. There are some visual clues here, even if you're not going to get like, a really in-depth understanding about what this work is about. And that really, only, it's, it's quite minimal work, it's not really giving a lot away. You, you know, we really benefit from artists coming here and talking about this work. But, you know, I think, I feel like there are visual clues here. Like, what I find with David's work is, like, there's this wonderful sense of strangeness about it. Like, you've got these, you come in and you've got these eyes peering out. And you've got these boots here, and actually, if you notice, there's like an odd number of boots. So it's almost like there's just somebody with one leg, you know. And you've got this weird object, this this coyote in a tooth, which is just bizarre and kind of funny. And I feel like even though there's not there's not like a whole lot of information that's coming out, there's still like a sensation about a feeling about being in this space, like a feeling of being watched, like you're in this space surrounded by really weird objects, mm -hmm. strange things, and that's like. It's not going to give you like a huge a history of this work or this artist's practice, but it's giving you like a sensation about what he's the kind of environment that he's creating. I think that's the point I was making is that we don't all see the same thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And what he had in mind and what I see were two different things. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. I think the humor is very important because if you were to walk in and that too was the other way, where those eyes were just a little bit more sinister, or the eyes peeking out of here. I would read it in a much, as a woman, I think, too, in a, in a very different way. It would almost verge on a, something that would make me uncomfortable, but it, it doesn't go there. Um, what project of yours required the least amount of items to? Create. Like, uh, like you know, obviously some are a bit more extensive. Like, you, you know, it takes time. But was there, you know, something that like, like was literally basically just, you know, a single item that you, you know, that you just put it on the table and it was like, I'm done. Oh well, I mean, I, I, yeah, um, I worked, made a lot of pieces using buckets and different containers and. You know, there's probably a few in that mix that, that weren't altered too much, mm -hmm. to put it that way. And uh, do you get the same um, satisfaction, whether it's a more of an extensive piece like that or whether it's a bucket? Like, uh, 
Is the process the same? The process, I mean, I think it's a lot of it's a process, and I think it's also about bringing it to the context to have conversations such as this, um, the conversation that exists between the other artists, I mean, that, that's unspoken, um, that, that, that people discover on their own. Um, you know, for me, the labor is not, you know, it's not about trying to say, look at my skills, look at my virtuosity and my ability to, to, to do this or something that you cannot do. Um, so, so time in work, I, I don't know if they necessarily go hand in hand. It's more about ideas and concepts that play behind the pieces. And, and that's really, for me, what the process is about. I just have a question for you. Um, you know, you the show is very much, I mean, both artists are kind of talking about the influence of nature and kind of talk about issues of rurality. And kind of being a rurally person who's brought up in the rural, kind of grown up on a farm. But the two shows, I see them as being so urban. Mm. Like very, I don't get that sense of nature, which I mean, it's one, like you said, it's all about perception and perspective. Right, right, but right, right. I find just like, because like you said, like it's, you're, like you're using these things that are meant to look natural, but they're not natural. But they're not, yeah. It's not the cedar tree, it's the cedar tree and all of that shake. It's yeah, not, yeah. you know, it's like the barbecue cover meant to look like rock, <coughs> the rock itself. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, very much so, like, I mean, you're talking about kind of safety and women and being watched. Like, I think in the urban, you're always being watched. Mm -hmm. Very much so, too. Like, more so to the fact that I, I don't even think about it. And then people are like, I saw you at, and you're like, huh. <laughs> I'm very visible. <laughs> So when you're making this, or do you see it as being like about kind of more urban, or do you like feel that it is really entrenched in rurality? I think it's entrenched there. I mean, I don't know if, if it. If I, I think it's a great observation. I don't know if it come across that that, that way, just with respect to the kind of objects and materials that I work with. I talk about this in terms of a hunting line and make it pretty bad hunting blinds because it's made, made like a garden shed as opposed to, you know, yeah. constructed a, a, something that would disappear in a, in a, in a field or in the woods yeah. for that matter. Yeah. So there is that sort of, again, I, I'd say the interplay between the, the, those spaces and, 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 and I think when I talk about those things, um, you know, that's more from the personal and the biography behind the work that, you know, how evident it is, I don't know, but I see it as part of it. I mean, I grew up in, you know, on the edge of Appalachia, in a very rural part of um, um, Pennsylvania, and, and, you know, and I, I, I think when I graduated from high school, it's the, the I wanted to get away from there, go to the city, and, 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 and as I grew older, um, and we moved around the, the country a bit, and I say I live in Halifax, I actually live outside of, you know, near a fishing village of maybe 50 people. Um, you know, I, I find myself sort of working back home. So I think sometimes it's about trying to navigate that space, right? You know, and, um, you know, I think back to that the Appalachia, and, and you know, I think it's often fascinating me how that's viewed outside of there. It's it's sort of the you know it's you know big part of popular culture, TV programs, and when people sort of like to marvel and looking at the other. Uh, but at the same time, you know, growing up sort of proximate to that, you know, I sort of always marvel at the sort of ingenuity, the, the, the self-reliance of, of the community, and, and sort of the, the looking at the past values and knowledge as a way to make it through this world. And um, So is all that in all in this work here? Do I expect people to see that? No, but it's the kind of things I'm always thinking about. And I think it's, it's navigating that space between. I know there's a lot of circles in your work. 
to the side <laughs> circle. Service. Eyes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Casper there. And, uh, <laughs> and buttons. <laughs> Any significance, probably not. Uh, no, but I, again, back to sort of our historical constructs and, and, and histories. You know, I talked about working with found objects or bought things like boots and buckets and cinder blocks. I mean, you know, I, I think I'm, I work in a very minimal way as well on, on a formal level in terms of the shapes that I work with. And I think that relates to part of our history. So it's, it's more about um, pairing things down to, to some basic elements despite the materials that I'm working with, so making them very simple and simplified. And so, yeah, so circle squares and all those things are important. Um, the other artist, part of his process was taking apart these pleather pouches outdoors. Uh, did you create your work in an outside space, or did it have any different feeling taking the outside? No, but I, I, I noted previously that like, twice before I made works for outside, and, and I feel that, personally feel they were effective in that setting, but I also recognize that what you lose is, uh, again, the theater of the gallery, Outdoors, there, there's you know all this apparatus is gone. The the you know the, the void of the white space. And, um, you know there's so much more information uh, around. So so no, not I I've never. I mean outside of making two things for outdoors, I never really created a piece such as his skinning performance outside. I should say also the. The only object in this room with any history uh, is really the, the coyote. Everything else is just purchased down the road at you know the, the, the hardware store. So I mean, it's new materials, um, raw materials, and, 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 and objects. I mean, the boots have never been worn. The tube has never been worn, and, and so forth. So so you know, really this piece here. It's why the oldest in the show really stands out very different for me. Uh, going back to one of the first questions you answered, you compared uh, hunting to art and you mentioned uh, the reward, which I guess is a big part of modern hunting, and was like the use of found art and just stuff that you can buy at a hardware store. Is there supposed to be a commentary that maybe modern hunting is supposed to be a retail experience, something to be consumed, more than kind of the manly survival connotations that people like to put on. I, I, I'd say no, I, didn't, I wouldn't take it that far. I don't hunt anymore either. I'll fish. <laughs> My family members are I just don't. But I mean, it's a good observation. I never thought of it, thought of it that way. I mean, there is so much stuff out there you get some of these shops like like Cabela's and Bass Pro Shop and so forth and you can spend a fortune just going out into the bush, you know, where all you really need is your your, your feet and Well hunting's become like I mean, it, weekend divide, hasn't it? Because it's not something that we have to do anymore. So in terms of sustenance. Yeah, it's like something, something that I uh, you know, it's a, it's a hobby, it's a pursuit like that we do at the weekend, it's disposable in, in that sense. I think for some, but I mean, it, it's, I mean, I guess it, it means, probably more, yeah, it yeah. means various things to various people, I guess. But I was just thinking, um, I like how your work kind of interchanges between using languages of art making, and, well, materials of art making and materials of the rural so because you know these days like we were talking earlier about the ready-made you know you can really use any kind of material in your practice but specifically you know art and objects in galleries are often sort of propped up on plinths made of wood or you know um, I feel like there's a lot of there seems to be like some crossover between what the materials your work is made of and the rural and going back to the the language of contemporary art and the material language of contemporary art. 
Um, this is yeah, a yeah, great yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just me rambling. Well, they're just the, the, the materials of the world we live in, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. As opposed to I guess. precious things, you know. Um, do you collect materials at random, or do you actually go out, like, have an idea in your head as to what you kind of want to create, and then go out and collect materials that way? Or, you know, are you just walking down the street, you see something, you grab it? Um, How does that come a little, A little bit of both, but more the latter, where it's, it's, I mean, I, you know, I talk here that I had been collecting, collecting taxidermy and not knowing necessarily why I was doing it or what I would end up doing with it. Um, but, but typically it's about having things kicking around the shop and playing around with things and those ideas evolving and then perhaps requiring a run to the Canadian Tire. I guess we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.